now and ever and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And let us say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the readings. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, is he is the King of glory. The prophet promises that as the day of the Lord's judgment nears, God will send a messenger to make to make ready the way, a reading from Malachi. Thus says the Lord, see, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judea and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as the, in the days of the old and in former years. Here ends the reading. The, inf the infant Jesus is brought to the temple to be presented to the Lord in accordance with the law. A reading from Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit that rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when his parents brought in the child Jesus do f to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel. And to the sign of that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of, of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. 
She was of great age, having lived her, with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow for, to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Here ends the reading. So as the scripture says, under Jewish law, Mary and Jesus had to wait 40 days until after Jesus' birth when they were able to go to the temple again and also make uh, essentially a thank offering. That's the presentation of Jesus in the temple, and it is also uh, from about the seventh century on become known as Candlemas because it is a tradition to bless the candles that will be used during the year in worship. Hence the two candles we entered with. Now I'll bet that you picture this scene in the temple as just being the Holy Family and Simeon and Anna. I think I've seen pictures like that, icons like that. And that's how I've come to think of it. But we have to remember that tons of people would have been in the temple. It's a big place. Money changers would be around priests and rabbis giving various sermons and lectures in various parts of the temple. And not only that, but probably tons and tons of other families had come to bring their baby for a presentation 40 days after birth. That would have been Grand Central Station essentially. And so how are Simeon and Anna able to see that divine light that it seems like nobody else saw? I think the answer is they were the ones looking for divinity. Let's bring the story forward. Do you look for divinity every moment of every day, any time during any day? Or do you maybe get so busy or sometimes cynical, or filled with so many plans, thinking about the past and what you might have said at such and such a time, that you no longer look for the holy around you? It can shine through anyone and anything. And I think you must, in a way, quiet your soul and maybe even empty your mind so that you know when the Lord appears. The Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh introduced all of us to the concept of mindfulness and how important it is. We must learn how to be empty, he said, to be fully present in the moment or we will miss everything. When someone you see that seems filled with the spirit of the Lord, can you guarantee yourself that you're going to be fully present and able to recognize that? 
But again, rather thinking about the future or the past or preoccupied with problems, that you fail to see the Holy Spirit, the divine, right in front of you. It is about mindfulness and staying in the moment. That's what Anna and Simeon really represent. Again, the feast of the presentation in the temple, also known as Candlemas. And over the ages, people have processed through churches with candles. And you know, it's a perfect way to celebrate Anna and Simeon recognizing Jesus in the temple. We all can light a candle to remind ourselves that we are light seekers of the Holy One. And so Preston and I entered worship today with lighted candles, a reminder to all of us to celebrate Anna and Simeon remaining in the moment and seeing the wonder they saw, God shining through. You know, this often is a dark and a fearful world, particularly this last year before 2021, which shall not be named, and we trust 2021 will be better. Um, there are always things to worry about, and there are some who live worrying about what can go wrong, what disaster may strike. I even feel like that sometimes. As Christians, we aren't Pollyanna-ish or falsely optimistic, but I think we do not live in fear expecting the worst to happen either. No, we are candle-holding people, people of hope, expecting the best, prepared for the worst, but expecting the best. We are Simeon's and Anna's, eager and attuned to recognize the Holy Presence when it shines through. Now, after this service and after annual meeting, which I've promised will be fun, go out into the world and expect the Holy One to shine through. Seek and ye shall find. And that will be coming through the annual meeting as well. Amen.
Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Guide us in the way of justice. Let your, save, let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor let the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly pray that as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple, so we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The prayers of the people. Made like us in every respect, our high priest knows our suffering and, inter and intercedes for us before the Lord of mercy, the throne of mercy, excuse me. Let us pray through Christ, saying, Lord, have mercy. For our church, that it be a light to all nations and a beacon for all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For God's people, Israel, First to hear the word of God, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For enlightened minds and hearts among those who act and work for the public good, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For, our God, for God's reign of peace, that no people need live in the fear of death, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who speak and those who hear, the prophetic word today, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For wisdom in old age and for fidelity in youth, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from winter's cold, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who walk in darkness, facing illness, death, and misfortune, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. 
Have mercy upon us, merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dan, Gabrielle, Betty Jo, Sharon, Sarah, Jean, Lisa, Linda, Hank Hankins, Heath, Bobby, Kathy, Jana, Summer, Stacy, Debbie, Roy, Gay, and those who we name now, either silently or aloud. We give thanks and pray for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially according to our parish cycle of prayer, Phil and Gay Sevier, Richard and Sandy Shimon, Rob and Carly Shoemaker, and their Ohana. We pray for the nation and all in authority. Also protect all men and women who serve our nation in faraway places, particularly those in harm's way, especially Ed Fitzpatrick. We pray for all those who have died, especially Alden Wong, Jeff Gunther, Jack Cormos, Micah Peterson, Brandon, Jorn, that they may find eternal life in your loving presence. God of mercy, be our light in times of darkness and our comfort in times of affliction. May we be as light in a darkened world, proclaiming your faithful love. We ask this through Christ, our one high priest, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This week we celebrate Bob Berry's birthday today, Carol Whitesell's on February 4th. I believe she will be watching from home, pretty sure. Alex Malahoff's on the 7th, which is next Sunday. And would you join with me in the community prayer? Watch over oh, your children, O oh Lord, as their days increase, Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we wish people happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaiian. How Oli Laha now, Aho Maikai.
one of the most wonderful things since Ina Young has joined us as our director of music. Um, she has all the young kids playing chimes, bells, and playing the organ. And just about everybody that you hear playing uh, in this service uh, is one of our young people. And then you'll hear the young people and uh, uh, join with uh, some others. Uh, they're called, calling themselves the Chimeleons. <laughs> they, will, they will open our annual meeting up. So thank you all. Um, if, you, if you were going to mention a birthday today and didn't have a chance to, um, please, mention, if you would, hopefully our mics will be working next week. We thought we fixed this problem this past week, but we didn't. So um, perhaps you can uh, mention them next week. But also, we have, we have up here and then in two places in the back, places where you can bring our directory up to date by telling us your birthday if it's not in the directory, making sure your contact information is okay, and then also regarding pictures, if you don't have one in the directory, send us one. If you have one, but they're with your children especially, uh, we might not recognize the children. So, so either send us pictures or we'll be working on taking pictures as well. And you can also get to our directory online. Um, let's see here. And we, as you know, most of you know, we do not pass the plate these days, but we have an offering plate there offering plate there, and an offering plate in the back. And um, we uh, invite you to give your offering um, in one of those spaces. I think that's all I have to say. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting.
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And take a little break, and I think there are some things in the back there. There are um, clementine oranges and string cheese and um, water bottles of water. The bottles of water, please notice, because they have a new 75th anniversary uh, uh, picture on them, made by Ann Waters. So if you're going to get anything, go ahead, feel free to do that. And... Um, We'll be ready to start the annual meeting anytime.